for his reasoning here because we now begin to see how important this commodity of love is in the Christian system. Have a look there from verse 8. There he says, Do not you people be owing anybody a single thing except to love one another. Do we owe one another something in this Christian congregation? Yes, we owe one another love. But then he continues, For he that loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. Man, what a statement to make. The complete comprehensive body of 600 laws, cold, perfect as they were, gone. Why? Loving one another. That's what he says here. For the law, the law code says, you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet, and whatever other commandment there is, is summed up in this word. Do you notice that? Word. Which word is that? Love. In essence, you must love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not work evil to one's neighbor. Therefore, love is the law's fulfillment. Wow, isn't that amazing? What Paul mentioned there has such power for us today. It is such an encouragement for us. Nobody could live up to the perfect law that Jehovah gave. There was no one on the earth. And yet what he mentioned is that if we have love, and this is something that we owe one another, we have fulfilled the law. He was talking to people who grasped what he was saying because they were burdened by that law. They knew exactly what it was all about. And you know, this was a man who came from such a cosmopolitan society. We know that he was a Jew, he was born into Judaism, he grew up in a Roman town, he was surrounded by Hellenism, so the Greek influence was there. So here we have a man for all seasons, we can say. And yet he realized that background, upbringing, education, that's nothing. Forget that. I've got no problems with Gentiles. I've got no problems with Jews. When I see a Greek, I can relate to him. No problem. But love went much further than that. And that is what we are going to talk about from this point forward. Brothers, love identifies the true Christian congregation. It doesn't matter who we are, what we've been, what nationality we are, what race our parents were. We've got no control over situations like that, really. We can't change that. But what we can do is show that love identifies the true Christian congregation. You know, isn't it a wonderful thing that in the congregations of Jehovah's people around the earth, we don't just have names like Mary, Bill, Tom, John, Martha. In our congregations, we have names like Chifwiri, Hiroshi, Kamala, and Chan. That's what the April 15, 2002 magazine says. It's a wonderful thing. We are a cosmopolitan congregation. Jehovah's people are an international brotherhood. And we love our brothers. At conventions, we take out our hankies and we wave to our Japanese delegates. They take out their kimonos and wave back at us, their fans. Isn't it lovely? Wonderful. But what about us individually? What about us in the Christian congregation? 
You see, it's all very nice to go to international conventions and to view the international brotherhood. But actually, what about those who are close to us in the congregation? You know, sometimes what happens is that we may look at our congregation and we can say to ourselves, Oh, you know, there are too many cliques in this congregation. All the pioneers are just for themselves. You know, you're either a pioneer or you're nothing. Have you heard that? Or maybe we begin to reason with ourselves, within ourselves, you know, it's just the elders. They're always there. Why don't they mix with us? We start to complain. We start to find fault with one another. Maybe the elders have kindly readjusted us in a certain, on a certain point. We were going in the wrong direction, and Jehovah, through His Holy Spirit, directed the elders to help us. And they kindly used the soothing words of God's Word, the Bible, to help us. But how do we feel after that? Oh, there He's on the stage again. Oh, man. In ourselves, we, we have this almost hatred because we've been firmly corrected. Is that loving? Maybe for sisters, we may see certain sisters are forever doing demonstrations on the platform. Them again. Maybe at the circuit assembly, certain ones are always featured because of their very fine example. Oh, them again. Oh, we, tie, we heard that three times in a row. Why don't we have new people? Can't they ever choose me? <laughs> Brothers, you've heard that just like I've heard that. You've said that just like I've said it too. This is what we're talking about here. You see, love in the Christian congregation is not perfect. It is forgiving. And we need to be forgiving because we are all imperfect people. We cannot expect perfection from one another. It's impossible. We need to be forgiving. And you know, some brothers work themselves up so much so that sometimes these problems that really play on them aggravate them and irritate them to such an extent that they feel, you know what, I've had enough of this congregation. Let me move. Let me move to the next congregation. Or maybe let me move out of town. You know, I'm tired of this congregation. Oh, this body of elders. Oh, I can't. Oh, man. That's how we feel, don't we? And so we decide, well, let me move to another city, to another congregation. Brothers, let me invite you to move to the following. Choose one of the following four congregations. If you have a problem in the congregation and you identify that that problem is a problem relating to your service of Jehovah with, rela with relation to love, choose one of these congregations. The first congregation I invite you to move to has the following situation. A very faithful sister. She's been in the truth for 40, 50 years. She's in this congregation. The traveling overseer visits the congregation. And you know what she does? She pulls him aside and she says, you know what? Remember, I brought your parents into the truth. Keep that in mind. <laughs> now, and she's got the respect of the congregation. I just want you to do me one favor. Friday night, I know that you're having your elders meeting. I've got two sons on, my, on that body of elders. I want my eldest boy to be presiding overseer of the congregation. I want my other son to be the service overseer. Okay? You got me? Fine. Would you like to move there? Not me. Never. Or congregation number two. 